Hello, welcome back to Project Air this week. I'm James, and today we're doing a very special project with this guy. Hi. A while ago, Tom Stanton and I decided to join forces to recreate the dam busters using an RC aeroplane and 3D printed bouncing projectiles. The idea was that I would create an aircraft to carry the barrels, whilst Tom would focus on a mechanism to both spin and drop them over a lake. So, we're building this. It's a Lancaster bomber. This is the first part of a two part mini series on Project Air, which focuses on how I designed and built my part of the collaboration, the aeroplane itself, all the way up to the nerve-wracking first flight. This was a challenge full of engineering problems and a few fails along the way. But with every grand idea, the first thing to do is to get designing something. Okay, first things first, Here's how I designed the plane. Now you might have seen in a few previous videos that I use Adobe Illustrator to design most of my aircraft. It's a great vector-based program for graphics that allows you to accurately trace around three view engineering drawings to create scaled down versions of real aircraft. With the Lancaster, the full-size aircraft is quite a beasty machine with a ton of different angles and curves to it. As we're doing a science project rather than an arts project, I decided to make an executive decision to simplify the model with a boxy-like fuselage, simple wings, and simplified engine cells. The next thing to do was to cut out the parts on the laser cutters that I have access to at work, thank you Vintage Model Company, and to get assembling all of the pieces. The main material I used for this build was foam board. If you're wondering where to get this from, probably check out the Vintage Model Company website as they'll be stocking this type of foam in the near future. Okay, on with the build. With the main fuselage pieces all cut, I started by gluing the main formers together to create a strong central wing box. After this, I could fold the main wing together and prepare my electronics. This plane recycled four motors and ESCs from an old quadcopter project to keep things affordable. I made sure that the four ESCs could handle four cell LiPo power to provide around a kilogram of thrust per motor, which would be more than enough for this aircraft. Next, servos could be added to the wings before the outer panels were scored and folded back to provide a nice high lift airfoil. If you want to know more about these sorts of RC aeroplane building techniques, I'd recommend that you check out Flight Test. For each of the engine nacelles, I specifically designed the cores of these units to be made from 3mm plywood to ensure that they could stand up to some hefty abuse. As this plane was made without landing gear, the pods had to take on some heavy forces inflicted by the belly landings. After this, I was onto the home stretch with just the four brushless motors to be installed and a skin of lightweight panels fixed to the fuselage top to form a decking. A simple but effective hatch was taped to the nose for access to the main battery, and the control surfaces were all connected up. Now, all that was left to do was a few finishing touches, but for that, I had a helper. <laughs> <laughs> all important job of covering the uh, engine nacelles goes to Tom. We're almost ready to go, so we're gonna plug in the batteries, test the motors, see if the differential thrust is working. All right, ready? <laughs> yeah, they're all spinning. Now we're going to try and power some on and the others off. Don't don't put the throttle on. Just turn the right. Yeah, okay. That is it. Watch not to knock the thing. <laughs> Takes off in here. Yeah, that would, <laughs> that would be bad. Right, what we're going to do is weigh it because obviously it's a big plane, it feels quite heavy. Uh, wing loading is important. We probably won't run a GoPro on the front. Hopefully, it will be able to carry the projectile and its own weight. Um, Should I lift it? Yes, please. What's that say? 2.2 ish. 2.2 kilograms, right. That's not too bad, is it? It's... And these motors, I reckon they're probably kilo thrust each. Yeah, so, so we might be able to go vertical. <laughs> <laughs> so it was off to a very windy, cold and wet field for a test flight and Tom wasn't too confident about the conditions. You've got some planks of wood in case we're stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's 
otherwise the, the return down this hill is going to be like the return from Everest. <laughs> <laughs> Although the Lancaster wasn't that much of a highly experimental design, we were all a bit worried about it, perhaps mainly due to the human element. As evident from Tom's appearance, it was super cold and difficult to keep warm. This is one of those fields where the ground is actually just like a solid layer of poo. Like it's to the point where the mud and the poo is like becoming emulsions. <laughs> this pilot fatigue factor coupled with the risk of binning the plane into the Calpac soaked field really meant that there was a lot riding on this first flight. Would it fly? And would it survive unscathed for the following mission it was built for? Unfortunately, there was only one way to find out. Right then, let's, uh, let's get this underway. So that's left, that's right, that's up, that's down. That goes that way, that goes that way, yeah. All right, chaps. Are you ready? As ready as we'll ever be. <laughs> That's got so much lift! Oh god, it's got a lot of up, up lift. Wow, that looks amazing! Tom, Tom, if you could come and stand next to me, that would be great. Can you trim it? Yeah, so it's flying, that's good. I think uh, we're not going to do anything too crazy with it now, because of course we need it for the proper mission. Oh, it's going quite fast. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! It's flying though, look at that. Mate, that flies amazing! It actually looks really good. Look how slow it's going as well. It's got a, there's a lot of uh, motors in the air at one time. I feel like I need to get some more altitude. It's got a ton of lift Let me though. Know if you do any crazy turns. I will, I will, yeah. I'm going to turn to the right now. Okay. Just going to sort of like weave across. Yeah, yeah. It flies quite nicely in this wind as well. Okay, I'm coming towards you. You've got a drip coming down from your nose, Tom. I know. <laughs> I probably have too. I'm gonna take my hand off the stick very briefly. Okay, I'm gonna do a, not a low pass, but a pass. Oh, that looks so sick. <laughs> Look at that, it's huge. Oh, it looks amazing. I know I would say that because I built it, but. All right, chaps, I'm gonna land it, and hopefully we can get it down in one piece. Okay, I'm coming around, coming in for landing. No idea what the stall speed is. Oh, yes! Oh. Woo! Nice one! Oh, yeah, finally. oh, my hand is so cold. <laughs> finally, you did miss that. <laughs> nice one, Matt. Woo yeah, easy. Oh, Pull up my fingers are going to shatter. Just gonna yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this uh, this episode. Make sure to tune in next time and subscribe so you don't miss the Bouncing Barrel episodes. Give this video a like if you want. Check out Tom's channel, check out Matt's channel, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. See you later. <laughs>